Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. Today I have a little um, snowball treat holder for you featuring the Freezin Fun Bundle. The Freezin Fun Bundle includes the Freezin Fun Stamp Set. It's a 16 piece rubber stamp set. It's clean mount and you can purchase the Freezin Fun dies to coordinate. When you buy these two together, you save 10%. I love this bundle and it's the feature bundle for our Stampa Stack this month at the Kitchen Table Stamper. This month, you can get the Freezin Fun Stampa Stack. This kit is optional and it makes seven cards. Two, sending warmth your way. Three, tis the season to be freezing. It includes your envelopes, extra paper and embellishments and ribbons to play with, and the materials to make seven cards. Two, life is better when we're having fun together. Well, it is Friday afternoon here as we're making this video, and I am doing a special offer. When you purchase the Freeze and Fun Stampa Stack class packet, kitchentablestamper.com slash shop, this weekend by Sunday at midnight i will throw in a kit for today's project absolutely free isn't that a cutie just a little weekend special going on at the kitchen table stamper now through the 22nd at midnight central time order up your kit for the cards and i'll throw in a kit for the treat all right, let's get started here. I've got two pieces of balmy blue card stock for my box. We have an outer wrapper and a little inner box. This outer wrapper is eight and a half by two inches, and the inner box is three by five and a half. I'll have a printable um, project sheet for you right below the embedded video. Just click the link. It'll include a picture of the template for you for easier cutting and scoring. I've got my Simply Scored tool here, and we are going to start with our outer wrapper. Eight and a half inch side is in the Simply Score tool, and we are gonna score twice. Three and a quarter, five and a quarter. Slide that one to the side for a minute. Let's put in our three by five and a quarter. We're gonna go on the three inch side, and we're gonna score both three inch sides at one half. Then we'll rotate to the right and score at one half, at two and a half, three, and five. Now let's work the score lines with a bone folder. There we go. And don't forget your outer wrapper. Let's work those scores too. Now we need our delightful tag topper. Let's punch both ends of our outer wrapper. So just go ahead and slide that guy in there. Make sure it's centered and give a pop both sides. We need our big shot. We're gonna do a little bit of cutting here. We're gonna make a window in our outer wrapper and we're gonna make a little um, holder in our box. Okay, so we need two dies. I've got my one and three eighths inch circle. That's the second smallest of the layering circles dies. And I've got my smallest, this one and 11 sixteenths by one and a quarter stitched rectangle dies. What you need to do here is position these dies. So the circle goes into one of the square segments. It doesn't matter at this point. And you want to tape that down so that it's centered. Eyeball that as best as you can. Then we're going to take the wrapper. And you want to remember you've got a half inch box that's going to go in there. We're gonna make a window, but we wanna make sure we have plenty of room down here to cover that inner box. Center right to left, and then we'll tape that guy down. Grab our stamping cut and emboss machine, and let's run those through. As you can see, the fun part about this little treat holder is you can do both of these openings 
in one pass through the machine. So if you're making a bunch of these treats, this just made the whole process a whole lot faster. You can be doing both little cutouts on one pass. So there and there. We need one more embossing uh, or one more stamp cut and emboss step on the outer wrapper. We're going to remove plate number two, put plate number three, and pop our little wrapper into one of the greenery embossing folders. I love this greenery folder. It's um, maybe not something that you'd grab for for winter all the time, but I highly encourage you to take a look at it. I think it looks like a scarf or a sweater. Really love this. We're gonna go ahead and put our treat package in the folder. Got a little Stampin' Up logo up, and we're looking at where the pattern's gonna fall and adjusting. Pop that in the machine and give it a crank. Now look at that. Isn't that great? It looks like it's knit. Time to do a bit of stamping. I've got some Whisper White cardstock and Blushing Bride. All of our stamping for this project is done with Memento Tuxedo Black. We're going to color with some Stampin' Blends. Tis the, tis the season to be freezing. I'm going to stamp that right on our scrap of Blushing Bride. Now, I love this little seal. It's just too cute. Got a seal, a stack of ammunition. I find that if I stamp it so that the little shadows are down, it's easier to line up the die to cut that out. I'll show you in just a minute. And then we got our little individual snowballs. And I'm giving these guys a little bit of room because you know how much I love to do all the die cutting in one pass if possible. Coloring for this guy, super simple. Got my gray granite combo here. And we're gonna fill him in with light gray granite. Avoid his nose. I think a freezing seal needs a pink nose. It's really important to keep that edge wet when you're filling in with Stampin' Blends. You'll get a smoother blend. And then the shadows are going to go in kind of where the artist indicated with the speckles here. And then we can do a little bit at the cleft of the tail, underneath, and under the fin. And then keeping everything real wet so that the ink blends. We're gonna go through and just combine the light and dark shade. Got some pool party here. This is light pool party. We're just gonna draw a shadow of pool party where the artist drew in the little hash marks for the shadows on the snowballs. I've got Dark Flirty Flamingo for our seal's nose and the Light Misty Moonlight for the hat. What we're going to do with the Light Misty Moonlight is fill in the hat almost entirely. And then we're going to go back with the Light Misty Moonlight and make a gentle shadow by just layering more Light Misty Moonlight on that back edge and along the fold of the hat. That's it. Very fast if you're making a bunch. Now let's die cut our pieces. All right, I promised you a little tip for your snowball. So if you always stamp them so the shadow is down kind of to the left here, then when you line up the die, you'll see there's this really not very round snowball here. It's kind of flat on the bottom. And then this one's kind of flat on the side. 
If you always stamp with the shadows down, then those two less round kind of flat deformed sides will go down also. And it makes it easier to line up that triangle instead of turning it and turning it and turning it to find the right way. Tis the season to be freezing is gonna get cut out with a fishtail banner. This is from Tasteful Labels. Love this little fishtail. And we want to have our sentiment centered top to bottom, but to the left side, because we're gonna cut a little hole, a thread hole in this and tie it on like a tag. And our last piece is these little snowflakes. This is from the tags, trio of tags die. We're gonna cut a couple of snowflakes here. There it is, all the die cutting, one pass and one pass for each of the treat bases. All right, so we need one little snowball. We'll save the other two for another project. And we need one of these little snowflakes. Save the next other one for another project. This is just all around an easy project to make multiples of because you can do so many efficient moves, cut extras all at one time, and multiple cuts in one pass. All right, let's get this all assembled, shall we? We're in the final stages here. So we're gonna take our wrapper and prepare it with the um, knit side out, fold that up, and then our inner wrapper, we need to do a little bit of hair cut here. Now it's very important which side you choose. This is the top of your box. On the top of the box you're going to cut these two little corners out. Now these are exactly the same size, this center, these corners, so just remember that when you're cutting your box down you want to cut out the corners that have the cut out center. So we're gonna just cut both of those out, little squares, little half inch squares and get rid of them. That's how the top of your box should look. Now we'll liberate our tabs here with just little darts. Cut until you hit the intersecting score line. There's three cuts on each side and then repeat just to bulk in that score line. Now, we'll take out all the little extra bits. It gives you a cleaner corner and a neater fold when you take out that extra cardstock. Your tear and tape adhesive for this, you gotta start with the outside of your box. You'll do the small tabs first. So there are four small tabs and all four of them get a little bit of strong adhesive. You can do liquid glue here if you're willing to hold until it grabs, or you can do um, your, your Seal Plus adhesive. That should be strong enough for this too. So that's your front side. This is the outside facing. Flip over and then the inside facing you're going to add tear and tape or another strong adhesive on the long tabs on the top side of the box with the cutout. While it's flat on the outside of the box, you can add a couple of strips of tear and tape if you like. And these come off in order. Start with the little ones. We'll remove all four. Now this allows us to build the bottom of the box. So tuck in and fold toward the bottom, making nice corners here all the way around. And you've made yourself kind of a, a Barbie pizza box at this point. Let's close up the box. Got the long tear and tape pieces close and then square this up okay. 
There's your little insert that can peel. And let's adhere the box to the inside of the wrapper, right in between the score lines. You can burnish that down this way. Use your bone folder in there if you feel like it. Got my little snowball candy here. This is the Ferrero Raffaello. I got them at Walmart. I'm gonna put a stamp and dimensional on the bottom. I did this video live and I was so tired of the little candies tipping out of the box and rolling away. Now they won't. Isn't that so cute? Look at the little snowball. All right. Got a little circle punch here. It's a one eighth inch circle. We're going to make a tag. Have you seen this snowflake splendor ribbon yet? It's so shiny, iridescent. It throws greens and purples. It's such a pretty ribbon. Perfect for a snowball fight. We're gonna loop through and we're gonna anchor this closed. I found my bow sat a little bit nicer if I did this step, if I kind of closed it with a anchor knot. I don't usually do that. Then you can thread the tag on. And then with the tag where it's going to sit naturally, loop up and then bring the spool side over the top of your bow. And that should pretty naturally put your, your loops up and your tails down and your tag about where it's supposed to be. We need a little finesse here. And trim the tails. Let's grab our snowflake and a glue dot. I'm gonna put a glue dot right in the center of the snowflake. And make it self-adhesive, nice strong sticky. And that can go right on the knot and the bow. And that silver shine picks up the silver on the wrapper. So cute. Now we need dimensionals. And with this project, I liked the edges of the dimensionals. So if you can take kind of a skinny little line and then cut a couple of pieces. What is that? Maybe three quarters of an inch. You can put it on the bottom of the seal or you could put it on the edge of the box. Peel and stick your little seal. That way you've got no adhesive. You've got good control over where your adhesive is going. And then you can do the same. Got our little snowballs here. I'm going a little shorter. You add a little adhesive there, see? So if you put your adhesive there, you know that there's not gonna be a sticky spot inside the window. And then little snowballs. Not just the cutest thing. All right, of course our little guy needs a snowball in his hand, so back to that little strip you're cutting off. Get a bitty little square. You can put that on the bottom half of the snowball. And then you can pop that little snowball right on his flipper. He's armed and ready. Tis the season to be freezing. Isn't that cute? All right, so we had accidentally cut a bunch of these little bases. And I am so happy to put together a kit for you for this project, free with your purchase of the Freezen Fun stamp -a stack project kit available in the kitchen table stamper store while supplies last buzz over to kitchen table stamper.com slash shop to see if we've got some of these class packets still available if you order your class packet between right now friday november 20th through sunday november 22nd at midnight i'll throw in this craft kit as a special bonus. 
All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com if there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty. If you've got questions about the project or about the special offer. To shop Stampin' Up! 24-7, you can buzz over to marissaalvarez.stampinup.net. To shop class packets and online classes, kitchentablestamper.com slash shop. And I always forget to ask, I'm trying to make a new habit. Please leave a comment, a like, or subscribe to the channel. That's how you guys know when I've got a new video and others know that we're here crafting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.